Well, first, it's a great time to be an aerospace engineer. There are lots of fantastic hap things happening in the world, uh, including such things like the launch of the first truly commercial spacecraft to the International Space Station, uh, continued exploration of the solar system, including Mars and the Earth uh, with robotic systems. And these are all due to the advances in the unmanned systems revolution that we're seeing now, and I'm going to be talking just a little bit about that. Uh, but first, before I talk about that, I want to take a little bit of a step back and talk about the past. Namely, the Wright Flyer is a good example of everything that we do in aircraft education. And the development of heavier-than-air flight by the Wright brothers uh, and everything that went along with it was really just accomplished by two people working together. Even though they had some help along the development, the design, the testing, the construction, and the repeated flights, were developed by just two men working together. And it was very difficult to see and replicate that type of experience that they had over 100 years ago. Slightly closer to home, uh, Clyde Cessna, 100 years ago in 1911, and uh, just 100 miles away in Jet, Oklahoma, uh, flew his aircraft that he built with his brother in his barn in Enid on the Great Salt Plains. Again, that uh, development uh, led Clyde Cessna to start his aircraft company in Wichita, which ended up producing more aircraft than any other company in the world and jumpstart the nascent aviation industry. Now, it's things like these that you know, we really like to pass along to students and you know, teach them about aircraft design. But modern aircraft, like uh, airliners and jet fighters, are very complex systems, and it's difficult to translate those designs which one person can't even understand everything on it, let alone go through the entire design process. So as we were working through, and I was a new young professor, uh, one of the things I wanted to do was try to give students these same type of experiences that these early aviation pioneers saw. And one of the things I did was go back to my undergraduate education uh, when I was uh, at the University of Oklahoma uh, working on a tornado chaser aircraft. Now first, so you may be uh, ashamed to hear that I was at uh, the University of Oklahoma and my students when I first came here asked me who I was going to root for in the Bedlam game. And I said, it's really easy. It's whoever signs my paycheck. But since then, as you can tell by the sneakers, I've become a diehard cowboy fan. Now, well, thank you. Um, as part of that, we were developing, uh, as, as a volunteer in a project, to develop an aircraft to fly into severe storms. The system was a little bit ahead of its time, but this remotely piloted vehicle was one of the early designs of unmanned systems. But it was one of my fondest experiences because developing this really told me and made me feel what it was like to go through and invent an aircraft from scratch. So as part of that, one of the things that we started doing, uh, working with Professor Suzanne Smith at Kentucky, was to develop an aircraft to fly on Mars. And we were nearing the centennial of flight at that time. Um, one of the things we wanted to do was kind of what better way to celebrate than, you know, have students uh, design, build, and test an aircraft to fly on another planet. Now, the interesting thing about this is it required a lot of different people to do this. So it wasn't just a single group of students or a single professor. We had professors from aerospace engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and computer science all working together to make sure that these systems were capable of being fully realized. Now, as part of that, we got to do lots of really crazy things, such as go out to Kitty Hawk and fly in the same places that the Wright brothers flew. Uh, we got to take these aircraft and put them on weather balloons and launch them up to 100,000 feet and above so we could simulate the same type of environment that the aircraft would see uh, on Mars in the very thin atmosphere. Uh, and the students worked countless hours and had many sleepless nights, but it was all worth it when they finally got to see that shot of the aircraft on the edge of space between the boundary of the Earth's thin atmosphere and the great beyond. And what that allowed us to do was essentially translate a lot of these ideas uh, into the type of systems that the aircraft or the students would be developing as part of their careers. One of my favorite shots from this is even though it's of the poorest quality and has a low resolution, uh, you can still see the excitement in the students as they launch their aircraft and see it fly for the very first time. And this was out on the OSU cricket field before Dr. Andy Arena managed to get our own aircraft flight station built east of town. 
And it just reminds me of, uh, again, that Wright Brothers shot uh, from early on. Now, there are many great programs across the country uh, developed to teach students uh, how to design aircraft and go through the process. And I'm going to talk to you about two of those here unique to Oklahoma State. The first of these is the OSU UAS Advanced Degree Program. And this is uh, one of the first programs in the country uh, that instead of training pilots to fly UAVs, what we're doing is training advanced engineers to go through the process of designing the entire aircraft system, which includes the airframe and all the components that go on board. Uh, and it always cul culminates in a flight test of the entire system. And there are lots of great examples of projects that the students have worked on, uh, one of those being the Dragonfly, designed and developed by two students, Thomas Hayes and Dustin Gamble, shown here with Professor Andy Arena. Uh, the aircraft alone set five world records and is so light that once you remove the propulsion system, you can hold it in the palm of your hand because it only weighs three pounds. Uh, the students of, often learn from nature and are able to replicate systems, being able to take in examples from nature himself so we can learn better to harvest energy and. Uh, Fred is bringing an aircraft out here. Aviation enthusiasts often like to call their vehicles birds. In this case, we can truly say that. And this project uh, worked on uh, in conjunction with a company uh, called DII in Norman, Oklahoma, to design biomimetic, biomimetic aircraft for the Air Force. Or in this case, you know, looking at the details of how the wings actually develop lift and how they transition differently. But sometimes it's the form, other times it's the function. Uh, hummingbirds, for example, can do things that no other bird can do, uh, but maybe that flight mode, replicating the way that they create that, uh, that flight capability, is not really the way to go about it, but replicating the type of motion is the type of thing that we maybe would like to be able to do. And as we move into the future and are starting to develop new types of aircraft systems that have the ability to fly indoors for search and rescue missions, these designs will become pivotal. Uh, we, nature has had millions of years to experiment with flight, and we're only just starting to learn all these things that we'll be able to do in the future at widely different scales. So we're just starting to scrape uh, the tip of the iceberg. Some of the other things that the students have been working on, uh, developing systems to uh, quiet aircraft, for, to make aircraft much uh, more silent, such as the apparatus shown here, where we uh, test them in the back of a truck, uh, which we uh, affectionately call CFD for Chevy Fluid Dynamics. Uh, and the goal here is to be able to make aircraft quiet. Nobody wants to hear a lawnmower flying in the air. And this obviously has ap ap implications for both military and commercial uses of UAVs. And the students have been able to develop an aircraft that has the noise characteristics of an electric engine, but with the endurance of a gasoline engine. And this has propelled uh, this particular design at the forefront of our program. Now, this also has uh, leaned us to join with the University Multispectral Lab uh, at uh, Oklahoma State University as part of DHS's uh, robotic aircraft program for public safety. Uh, and in this case, they want to use aircraft for search and rescue missions to try to evaluate different systems so that you can find those uh, before uh, and after um, natural disasters. A Hurricane Sandy is a good example of this. If we were able to have UAVs be able to fly in the national airspace and perform search and rescue missions, not only to find uh, um, victims of the hurricane, but also, for example, lost hikers, tracking the wildfire uh, movements, and helping police and National Guard coordinate efforts. Another part of this is repurposing uh, Raven systems, being able to apply solar cells so we can increase the endurance of the system and but also allow soldiers to charge their systems on the ground, such as phones and laptops, to make it a multi-purpose uh, type of device. The second program I'd like to discuss is SpeedFest, uh, which is a, a program aimed at both undergraduate students in aerospace engineering and also high school students, developed here by Andy Arena. Uh, Andy Arena has grown this program to be the premier organization of its kind in the world, and OSU has won more design bill fly trophies than all other programs combined. And as part of this, students are required to build very unique aircraft that sometimes have very stringent capabilities, such as launching from a catapult or even taking off vertically before 
uh, cruising to horizontal flight. And Taylor's bringing out some of the aircraft from last year's programs. Taylor was captain of uh, last year's winning team. Now some of this process can uh, best be seen uh, through uh, part of a video, but these aircraft are designed under very stringent conditions. They'll have to travel, once they take off vertically, upwards of 200 miles an hour and pull loads of over 40 Gs in a turn. But the design process is what the focus of the project is. The students have to go through the process of designing the aircraft, combining the aerodynamics, the structures, the control system, and the onboard uh, payload, such as cameras. But they're going through the process of being able to manufacture and using the same type of techniques that industry uses gives them really a great experience. Now, in some sense, um, you might think that uh, Dr. Arena and I are somewhat of charlatans because we've managed to convince the university that we need to have students build aircraft for us, uh, but don't tell my wife that. <laughs> now, all this is about generating the excitement in the students and the next generation of engineers, and we can really see that among their faces uh, when they're done with the project and being able to see um, the excitement when they have the completed aircraft and they're able to uh, see the triumph in the final design process. Uh, but we'd like to be able to take this forward again onto the next generation of aerospace engineers. Thank you very much.